This is a questionable reality production. Hello, hello, I'm Xander Crowns, and this is AP Post History. Now let's get started. Today we will be covering topic 1.3, the disappearance of the Latvian government and pre-apocalyptic culture. These are two weighty subjects, and I think we should start with pre-apocalyptic culture. Culture is one of the most prominent and important facets of any given society. Culture is expressed through arts, film, music, literature, and numerous other customs. My discussion here is by no means an exhaustive list, but will focus on a few key developments in this pre-apocalyptic society. One of the most monumental and impactful development was, drum roll please, universal adoption of the customary, otherwise known as the imperial, system of measurement. That is, rather than everyone pressuring things to be measured in meters and kilograms, the people of the world adopted feet and pounds and all the other splendid forms of the customary system. But how is this possible, you might wonder? All our modern trends indicate that the metric system is the better system of measurement, with a few stubborn stragglers refusing to adopt it. Well, the rationale is twofold. Again, since the United World decided to adopt the complete legal system of the United States, it seemed fitting to also adopt the system of measurement of the United States, in that even far into these post-historical times, the U.S. was successful in retaining its customary system. However, the more compelling argument was the inherent humanity of the customary system. The metric system is just simply so cold and heartless. It is so rigid and overly exact that it is far removed from human nature, a nature of which is known for its arbitrariness and imperfections. Thus, we needed a measurement system that properly reflected such. So, the arbitrary and Byzantine nature of the customary system found a new appeal in this era. Because why should everything be so exact and so perfectly line up? That is simply not human. Measurement systems are all arbitrary in a ways. Despite whatever system we use to supposedly justify it. Social media, a dominant facet of today's time, was completely phased out from society in totality. People realized that social media was no more than a mind drug, sedating them from their reality of the world, while subjecting them to complacent existence devoid of the necessary motivation of suffering and uncomfort. People stopped thinking farm animals were cute, goldfish were no longer held as household pets, Moments before they took over the world. Quite a close call, right? In the business side of things, producers of American flags and other patriotic symbols became the dominant, most lucrative company in the world. Given now the entire world adopted the American system of governments, they correspondingly needed American emblems to be in line with all the flag codes and whatnot. This was, of course, a heated debate in some nations and a lasting source of contention. But such was such. In the field of film, there was a revival of colored films. After years of films being made exclusively in omicatol enhanced colors, a wave of sci-fi optimism took over the theaters, celebrating an improved world under this new utopia-esque government. Literature followed suit. Now... In this pre apocalyptic society, I think music took quite an unfortunate turn. A new instrument, the dactyl phone, dominated all newly produced songs, hovering around an appearance of about 70% of all musical content at this time. Now, the problem with the dactyl phone is that it is only capable of making humming noises that sound as if they originate from a man with an excess of gravel in their throat. Of course, this music also tended to be completely instrumental, relying on the dactyl phone's strange cacophony of old man hums. 
which is just weird. The dactylophone then was also often accompanied by the iamba hexaphone. This mouthful of an instrument made one note, which sounded eerily like the opening and closing of a refrigerator, which they didn't even have in those times. Now, I must adopt a more serious tone as I discuss one of the greatest disasters of the pre-apocalyptic time. That would be none other than the disappearance of the country of Latvia. Now, Latvia had been functioning well as part of the New York on the other side of the Atlantic organizational unit, and that it had remained relatively unremarkable, with no one really paying much attention to the little country. Until one day, the world woke up and found the entire landmass of Latvia missing. Just missing. Nothing more, nothing less. As if perfectly excised around its borders and picked up, the United States established a fine Latvia commission and looked everywhere they could think of to find the missing Baltic state. Even where they last saw Latvia, it simply disappeared out of nowhere, with no explanation. The disappearance sent ripples across society and served as an omen of the imminent apocalypse. In today's History Maker segment, let's hear from President Unpronounceable on the depressing subject. The Latvia disappearance problem is one wholly attributable to the anti-state named faction of governments and one of their devious means to undermine a foundation of our democracy. Therefore, in my strong preponderance to uncover the evils of the anti-staters, I have created a new agency primed for solving this issue. I promise that before the next election cycle, Latvia will walk upon the world. Of course, he didn't fall through with this, and the program never found Latvia or a single Latvian, even though a few did survive given they were on vacation or something like that. A long mourning culture developed to remember the strange and sudden disappearance of Latvia. Along its former territorial borders, memorial markers were established. Unfortunately, the mystery that resulted in the disappearance of the Latvia was never discovered. Some researchers were close, but then the apocalypse happened. Quite inconvenient, I know. And that's it. Topic 3 of Unit 1 is complete. If you want to find success in your post-history class and find Latvia, consider subscribing and liking this video. My goal is to see that each and every one of you get a 92 in your class and a 7 on the AP exam in Quintober. Alright, Xander Crowns, checking out.